Alright folks, we have decided to descend from the heavens and go over each of the creatures of this land, both large and small. We will be starting with the small. From the horrifying bloodsuckers to the oddly homicidal Gigapithecus. Now join us through this list of many useless creatures. This list is mostly for early game rather than late game. They are what you would call gimmick creatures. And don't expect both of us to go over every single detail as that would make the video five times longer for each part. I'm going to tell you what they do, what they're used for, and tell an extremely racist... Okay, so imagine you're casually walking through the tall grass where something bites your balls. It's the goddamn compi, the chihuahua of the dino world. These bastards hunt in packs, and you have pack boosts up to eight, and get more aggressive with how many of the friends are nearby. The benefit of these creatures are insane. When taming them, you can use them to hold tiny amounts of material. Along with that, they can bite through thatch, so they can be used for raiding if you have enough of them. And if you're lucky enough, you might even be able to kill a low-level dinosaur. And don't forget, they're tamed by being knocked out and feeding them a little bit of meat. This feathered fiend, the Archaeopteryx, these deformed chickens have a strange obsession with chitin. They are tamed using the knockout method and again have a fetish for chitin. These creatures are no danger to you, but they do look extremely similar to one of the most dangerous creatures in the game, the Microraptor. This thing is basically their autistic cousin, boasting the amazing ability of only being able to glide. Somehow not having the ability to fly on their own, when tamed they can be used as a portable hang glider, traversing mass distances. Other than that, they are like sap collectors. They collect sap for you. And it is in fact one seventh as effective as just having a tree tap. Mix that with their low health, and they don't stand a chance in most circumstances. As we said before, this thing loves chitin, so hit it a few times with the head with the trank arrow, put some chitin in its inventory, and boom, got yourself a brand new organic glider. We have the bite-sized snack of the dino world. There's not a single weapon in the game that won't do the job. Almost every medium creature can one-shot it. It's a herbivore that runs the second it sees anything that poses a threat to it. It's evolved one evolutionary advantage. It's so delicious that when you go to kill it, nearby predators will fight you for it. Generally, this creature is used for livestock, meat stock, hide stock, it can be a turret tester, a door guard, and even a bioweapon, as it's one of the few creatures that can contract swamp fever. The dodo. Cappy Bar- wait, no, it's just a Carbominus, aka giant turtle, which is Greek for coal turtle. Somehow this creature is able to be the combination of the bane of turrets, able to soak up large amounts of bullets, but is also horribly killed by crazy naked men with large spears stabbing them in the face. One of this main weaknesses is its cripplingly slow movement speed when on land. A player merely walking backwards is still faster than this thing. Now, in water, that's a different story where they are decently fast. But both things can be true. It can tank bullets, but not tank spears. This is a thing called damage reduction. It's all about where you aim. If you hit the shell, all the damage is reduced by 80%. If you're hitting the legs or the tail, it will be reduced by 50 So the only real chance you have to hit this thing repeatedly is in the face. Despite being a turtle, it can't pull itself back into its shell. I think that massive weakness for people who know where to hit. But the reason why this creature is able to soak up so many turrets is because they may have auto aim, but they don't aim for the head. This is not the best tank you can get, despite all those upsides, because other tanks are able to protect the rider, and as you can see in the shell, does not really, it kind of leaves the rider completely unguarded. If 
you want to turn them into friends, all you need to do is knock them out and feed them some berries. Dilosaur. There are so many other names for it. But it's famous for one main thing. Spitting more venom than my ex-wife after the judge rules she gets both the house and the kids. In the early game when you have nothing, you still have a fighting chance depending on the level of it. It has rather low health so you, you can possibly kill it with either a stone hatchet or a spear. But the second it launches its venom at you and finds its mark, you better find a direction to run in or start swinging and praying. When hit by its asset, a player or dino is nearly completely blind and takes a decent amount of damage. Don't worry because this thing's a, also a pack hunter. So while you're blind swinging and praying that you could actually hit this thing, two more might appear. You can tame this creature by knocking it out and feeding it some meat. There was not really any point in taming this thing. <laughs> On to the only creature to have a royal version, the griffin. Also known as, ooh, what's that? Before you get pounded into the dirt. It's a combo of a lion and a bird. It probably has herpes or something that makes it angry because this thing smashes anything that gets near its territory. Naturally, it's a complete cunt to trap and tame and has the downside of not being able to use saddles. So if somebody shoots it, it's going to do a lot of damage. One of the good things about it, though, is that it's one of the fastest flyers in the game. Its speed comes from dive bombing and pulling up, which is a unique flying style, which requires a lot of practice to get used to, and has a piss poor turning radius. Its main upside is that it's able to carry two players rather than one. Oh yeah, but the royal version? It's only on mobile. Next we have the Heperonis, a creature that is usually killed on sight. It's similar to a kinder egg or Christmas present. You're usually happy to see one and all you want to do is rip it open and get the prize inside. You can tame these creatures by bringing them dead fish, and depending on the size is how much they'll be tamed. After eating 5 fish, the Heperonis are supposed to lay a golden egg that will temporarily increase experience gained by 500%. Though, when we try to replicate this, it said, and I quote, I ain't no one's hoe, free my brother Pingu, doing life in the icebox, end quote. Anyway, the prize inside is organic polymer, which is a substitute to regular polymer, which is needed to make most end game equipment. You will need nearly an endless supply of it, so being able to make a farm can be very convenient. Other than that, when tamed, they're pretty good at fishing, instantly killing most small fish. <laughs> the hyena does hunt as a pack to take down bigger animals, consisting usually of an alpha and two others. They're mostly known in medium game for chasing you down and killing you as they are rather fast. Being scavengers, they will also attack any unconscious dinos, which makes taming extremely hard in whatever area they are in. To tame these things, it does not require food, but rather requires you killing the big papa of the group, and usually cage to one or two of the others while you pet them. When tamed, you can put meat packs on them. Meat packs make the food last longer than your uncle's last three marriages. Though to me, I'm just gonna buy a fridge instead of taming these things. As a last note, for some reason their size can vary quite a lot. All the way from a little weasel to a damn dire wolf. Itchy Ornus, a creature with ravenous claws and razor beak, and a mind filled with nothing but plans to destroy humanity. Most players don't even know they're in the area until they're too late, as you can aggro them just by being nearby. They will swoop down and do one of three things. They can dive bomb you, smacking whatever you're holding straight out of your hand, and they can swoop down and rip food from your pockets immediately eating entire sacks of food in one bite. And last but not least, this demon king of the sky can grab small animals and start eating them midair. Its weakness though is its small health pull. It'll die in a few small hits from anything. When tamed though, they can be set to hunt where they can kill fish and other small creatures such as the dodo. Usually, it'll be much faster and more efficient for you to get the food. On a large tame though, they can fight, but they're extremely good at getting all types of meat. <laughs> Iguanodon. This bitch right here got spayed. You can even switch it into multiple gears. This shit got battle mode and speed mode. And when you're in speed mode, this thing ain't ever gonna run out of gas. It stabs you with both of its thumbs that have been hardened into mini pikes. They can be tamed by knocking it out and feeding it berries. 
Despite being decently large, bolas still work on it. Notably though, it is immune to the effects of the jellyfish, or as I like to call them, the god of stunlock. They are most famous for touching you for half a second, getting your creature paralyzed, and just shocking it until it dies. Not only is this thing immune to that though, it also gets a lot of toxins for them. And while they're proficient in gathering berries, they have a special ability where they can de-seed each berry, giving you mountains of berries you wouldn't otherwise have in your inventory. Carocus, a harmless creature constantly hunted in New York Shinshin, are full of delicious organic polymer. The only thing keeping these creatures around is that they take residence in rather dangerous areas. So humans, rather than making camps, will kill large amounts of population at a time or take one home and create a breeding farm as they can be very useful for egg farming. They can also join you in the water and help you attack fish, though they constantly get stuck on rocks. Lastly, being near them provides insulation, which can stack. They can be tamed by knocking them out and feeding them fish. Caprosuchus. Now think about this, they took your crocodile and they femboyed it. It's skinnier and faster. It's better to avoid these creatures at all costs because of the reduction in size and weight. They gain the ability to jump. When you're in nearby water, they'll be patrolling and they'll use a mid-range pounce, typically ripping you off your tame and landing you safely in the jaws of this creature. You'll be then put into an ultimate game of tug-of-war, while in its mouth it'll start running around in different directions, attempting to turn your ribs into dust. During this, you have three main ways to escape. Call your animal and pray it's fast enough, or smart enough. Pull out your sword and try to outlive it. Or lastly, if you have infinite health and great armor, just wait until it lets you go. The pounce can be blocked with a shield somehow, and luckily, the cap is a glass cannon, only having about a thousand health even at higher levels, meaning it can easily be knocked out, allowing you to escape or tame it. It can be tamed with regular meat, by the way. Flymentira, the moth. There's no real reason to tame one of these guys. They're easy to knock out tame, they eat berries, but they don't fly very fast and their attack does barely any damage. The only good thing about them is that they can drop spore bombs that slow people down. And it has a decent bit more weight than your average Pantera. Lysosaurus, lover, master acrobat, a best friend that pushes you to go further. Faster than tiny dino with low health and pitiful stubby legs. When petting it, it'll give you a 1.5 times XP boost within a certain range for about 5 minutes. When leveling up this XP slash egg farm, it'll do a backflip, instantly impressing any nearby humans. It's a passive tame and likes berries and rare flowers. Warning, watching too many backflips may cause irreversible madness. A spreader of decay and suffering, the Megalania holds an impressive weapon. Not just rabies, but mega rabies, a disease that has been the end of many a survivor and dodo. Mega rabies is a plague that when infected with will cause both your vitality and your stamina to flow out of your body, along with the blood from the bite wound. Mega rabies can also spread to any nearby victims while the victim is coughing. On top of being extremely aggressive, the Megalania holds nearly unparalleled mobility being able to cling to nearly any surface, including sheer cliffs and hanging upside down. To tame this fierce beast, you must knock it out and feed it meat. Keep in mind, the Megalania doesn't punch well above its own weight and can be easily killed by most endgame dinos. A small chicken with the arrogance to believe he can fight God. The Microraptor is imbued with minuscule amounts of health and tiny amounts of strength, but Hermes has looked upon him with favor and abused him with super speed. But this is a beast that only knows rage and thusly has used its god-given gifts for only evil. 
The Micro Raptor possesses one main move. The drop kick. Regardless of armor between height and tech, the Micro Raptor will fly around you a few times, savoring your fear before slamming its feet into your face, blurring your vision, stunning you, and launching you off all but the largest of tames. The way this raptor survives is after stunning its opponents, it runs away and waits for another dino to pounce on the opportunity for a free meal. You can tame them by knocking them out and feeding them meat. Lastly, when tamed, you can use its dropkick ability on other players. My ride or die baby in the sky. An egg gathering, barrel rolling, go to flyer. The Pterodon is an early game tame with a saddle you can unlock very quickly. It has a good fly speed and ability to dodge incoming threats, along with a barrel roll that does extra damage and launches you further. One of its main flaws is weight capacity and its health. When you're riding this dino, if you get bit by a rex or shot by a lightning wyvern, you will not last very long in the line of fire. It only takes a few bites from heavy hitters to turn you into mush. And for the most part, you can't have much in your inventory when riding a pterodon. This baby is a knockout tame. With its low health pool, it only takes a few arrows to take it out. It's a very passive creature that will flee when you get near it, but all you need is a bola, some meat, and good aim. If you're going for cheap and easy flying transportation, you'll find no better team than the PT. If you use its skills effectively, it is a great team to get wyvern eggs with. Lena Gain for the mythological creatures and all types of dinosaurs, would a human-sized scorpion be a scavenger rather than an outright predator? Pollen scorpions prefer spoiled meat, implying that they wait for other bigger things to kill their prey before coming back later to get the scraps. Pollen scorpions are surprisingly very curious creatures, but value their personal space more than anything else, making it so most encounters with these creatures will have them walk up to you, bump up against you, and try to poke holes in you and inject their sleep chemical into your brain. The scorpion can be tamed by knocking it out and feeding it spoiled meat. When tamed, they're a bit slower than your average non-leveled survivor, making it a decently fast tame. The real thing you should be leveling is health and melee, because the amount of melee the scorpion does relates to how much torpor it inflicts. Now, keep in mind, you won't be knocking out anything worthwhile, like a rex, unless you massively boost its health or have an amazing saddle. Despite its knockout ability not being that useful against most things, you can use a bow while riding it. Another upside of this creature is while exploring caves, you won't get attacked by most enemies, allowing you to easily get artifacts. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time.